Christ living undivided bride. You need a strong east wind. You need a strong east wind to blow out your preconceived ideas. You need a strong east wind to blow out your religion. You need a strong east wind to blow out the doctrine of the scribes and Pharisees, which still possess your soul because you've not allowed the Holy Ghost to move in you and set you free. A ministry with a vision. A ministry on the move. A ministry established by our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think what God wants to do in his people is make his supernatural Holy Ghost fire and power clear to our sight, clear to our mind, so that there is no doubt in our spiritual creation who God is. Bible for Christ Love International Ministry, a ministry of the ministry built on the plane. God. How many of you are glad to be here this Sunday afternoon, ready to praise the Lord and give him all the glory? I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the house of God today. Hallelujah. God, we give you all the praise. Are y'all ready for service today? Amen. I am ready for what God has today. I can feel the fire of God. I hope you came ready to receive everything that God has for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just come to you right now, God, and we thank you for your power and your anointing. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would fill this place with your anointing and your spirit. Oh, God, you are welcome in this place. Oh, have your way today. We surrender to you. We surrender to your will. We surrender to your way, God. Oh, God, I pray that you would move in a mighty way. God, touch your people. Oh, God, minister to their heart. And, Father, let us give everything to you today, God. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. How many of you are going to praise the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might? Hallelujah. Fresh oil is flowing. The comforter is close. This resurrection feeling is called the Holy Ghost. Ghost is rest and refreshing. It's heavenly power. This encore of Pentecost is happening this hour. Let it fall on me. Let it fall on me. Let the Holy Ghost and fire fall on me. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall on me. Let it fall on me. Let the Holy Ghost and fire fall on me. The bridegroom is coming. Let's rise up a shout. It's the upper own spirit that the King is pouring in. Sing his fire in my bones and his healing to my soul. Holy Ghost and fire fall on me. A bright through is coming. Let's rise up a shout. See it's out for own spirit that the king is pouring down. His fire in my mouth and his healing to my soul. I'm feeling all over me right now. I'm surrendering. Let it fall on me, cause all that I'm 
Ghost and fire fall on me. Oh yes, Lord, let the fire begin to fall. Oh yes, I feel the fire of God in here. On the love of some of us. Renew us with new tongues. Revive us with new wine. Baptize us with fresh fire. This is our time. This is our time. Renew me with new tongues. Oh, let it renew you right now. Let that fire begin to fall. Oh, yes, that of us. Shut that of us. This is my time. This is my time. Renew me with new tongues. Revive me with new wine. Baptize me with fresh fire. This is my turn. This is my turn. Renew me with new tongues. Revive me with new wine. Oh, I want it to change. me with fresh fire. This is my turn. This is my turn. I can feel it in my head. I can feel it in my feet. Oh, I feel it today. It's the Holy Ghost that fire. Fall over me. I can feel it in my head. I can feel it. I can feel it in my feet. I can feel it. It's the Holy Ghost that fire. The Holy Ghost. Oh, the Holy Ghost. I can feel it in my head. It's the Holy Ghost and fire all over me. I can feel it in my head. I can feel it in my feet. It's the Holy Ghost and fire all over me. Renew me with new tongues. Revive me with new wine. Baptize me with fresh fire. This is my time. This is my time. Renew me with new tongues. Oh, is it your time right now? Lift up your hands. me with fresh fire. We praise you. This is my time. This is my time. Renew me with new tongues. Revive me with new wine. Baptize me with fresh fire. This is my time. This is my time. Oh, I can feel it in my head. I can feel it in my feet. It's the Holy Ghost and fire all over me. I can feel it in my head. I can feel it in my feet. It's the Holy Ghost and fire. And it's all over me. Just begin to lift up your hands. Oh God, we surrender to you right now, Father. We ask you for your will. Oh God, I pray right now. Oh God, begin to flood this place. Father, with your anointing and your presence. Oh, just cry out to him right now. Oh, we're in a place in the ministry that we're standing right at the brink. Oh, of great things that he's going to do. And it's going to take you every opportunity you're given. Listen to me right now. Every opportunity you're given to come to the altar and to surrender and to lay down your life. That's what it's going to take. You have to come to the altar and lay down your life. You gotta ask Jesus to take over and take control. Oh, every opportunity you're given to sit at the edge of your bed at night and lift up your hands and seek the great I am and thank him for the day you had and pray for the day you're gonna have tomorrow that he would lead you by his spirit, that he would lead you by his word. On the Lamasi, oh you, you got called. He called you, he called you, he called you to be that lion, to be that lion that will roar. Will you roar right now? Will you roar? 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 
somebody roar, somebody roar, somebody roar, somebody roar, somebody roar, somebody roar, 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 God of Jacob, great I am, King of angels, Son of man, voice of many waters, song of heaven's throne, louder than the thunder, make your glory known. Oh, he's going to do it today. I believe it. Hail, Lion of Judah. Oh, yes. Will you say it today? Let the lion roar. Oh, just to let him roar right hail, now. Hail, hail, Oh, we want you to roar. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Oh, yes. Let the lion roar. 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 Roar.
the Lord. I seasoned you and I'm going to send you out with fire. With fire. Oh, I'm going to send you. You're going to meet. Be ready when you least expect it. You're going to meet new contacts. I even see them. I see a map of a country. I don't even know what it is. I just see a country. Get ready. I'm, I'm going to seek you. you. I will seek your face. I will seek your face. I will seek your face. Seek your I will face. seek your face. I will seek your face. I will seek your face.
like a lion roars, I will cry holy. 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 me big fruit I see large 
fruit. And the Lord says, partake, eat, eat, eat. Oh, Mahasi, for your mouthy balokosa will be anointed of me. Oh, ha, oh. It is a new season, daughter. It is a new season for you, Imandalamasi. For I will give you, I will feed you, and you will speak. An anointing will flow through you. Iha, Amandalamasi will flow through you. It will flow through you. See, that's where we're getting ready to head. That's where we're standing at right now. That's why we can't come in any time that those doors are open. Any time that there's a service. Any time that the word is being spoken. I don't care who the vessel is. God has anointed. God has prepared. God has built up the vessels to speak to the people. I want everybody to stay put just a second. I didn't know how this was going to happen, but if you can roll that pulpit out, I'm just going to share with you. We're not going nowhere. Nobody move from where you're at. God is going to do something today. His anointing, his fire, his presence is here. And he doesn't want you to move. But I got to share this one thing that the Lord spoke to me. I had this whole message preached, uh, uh, written out. But there's this one part that the Lord said I have to speak today. See, it's vital. Mark my word. It is vital. It is vital for you to come open before the Lord any time that it, the opportunity presents itself. There is fire in this place. The fire of God is present. The presence of God is real. His healing virtue is real. He changes people. When he changes you, it's real. When he fills you up, it's real. When he changes your whole life, it's for real. See, see, there might be a fake out there, but in order for there to be a fake, there's got to be a real. And right here, right here, right here, right here, where the fire of God is, it's real. It's real. God has called us. He's prepared us. He's fed us for many years. 39 years we just completed of April celebration. And I want you to just meditate for a minute what that means. For most of you, 20 plus years of sitting under the anointing, sitting under the word. You can continue to play just softly as I speak this because we're going to change here a little bit. Hallelujah. I want y'all to stay up here though. We're not going nowhere. But think about that. Meditate about that. On that just for a second. For the bulk of us, 10 years. Let me just even bring it down a little bit. 15 years, 5 years, 2 years, maybe some just a year. But even in that one year, what God has given you is so rich, so powerful. It's real. For the ones that have been born under or in Revival for Christ Club, my God, You've had it your whole life. It's been there for you. The riches of God. The wisdom of the Lord. Keep on playing. I don't want that to stop. You keep on playing. I'm just going to be up here for just a second. And then I'm just going to wait and see what the Lord wants me to do. But I want the people of God to hear this. For 39 years this ministry has operated by fire by power 
power by the Holy Ghost. I have never seen the men and women of God slip anything under the rug and not deal with it. They've dealt with everything. There is such an honesty in this ministry that I'm telling you, for those of you who may be new, those of you who are who will watch and have never heard of us or never seen us or you don't know who we are, I'm going to tell you, I've been here since 1994 and I've never seen the men and women of God slip anything under the rug. Always presented everything up front, everything honest, everything true. And see, you have a sign that'll show you that that's true because there is no way, there is no way that the fire of God, that the anointing would be present if it wasn't that way. There is an anointing here that I have never felt in any other place. There is a realness, a heaviness of his presence that resides here. There is a heaviness of presence that whether you understand it or not goes with you wherever you're at. That impacts people if you let it. Will impact the audience around you. It will impact their life. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen when I haven't said anything that people will come to me and tell me all their problems. They don't even know the real me. They don't know, but it's the truth. That's what she said. Because that's because the truth is inside of you. And when they stand in front of you, when they stand in front of you, they have to tell the truth. And the ones that run from you are the ones that don't want to tell you the truth. Hallelujah. But we are in a powerful ministry and in a powerful time and a very important time that you need to take note of that we need to be very wise with what we do with our time that what we do with what's been given to us the lord had me read and i'm gonna you don't have to grab your bible you can just stand right there but i'm gonna share this with you but the Lord had me read the story of Joshua. And see, the children of Israel, they escaped out of Egypt. The Lord made a way. He sent Moses. Moses was up on that mountain and saw a bush burning. And he was drawn to it. And when he went to it, God laid out a plan for him to go and lead all the children out of, his, uh, of Egypt. And he told him once he saw that bush and he went up to it and it was on fire. He told him, take off thy sandals for you're standing on holy ground. That was the first thing he had to do. He removed those sandals. And he was standing on holy ground because God began to speak to him. And the Lord told him, I've heard the cries of my people. I've heard their cry. It's come to my ear. And because it's come to my ear, I'm going to send you. You're going to go and you're going to lead them out of Egypt. And he had a conversation with God, but he did it. He went. And when he did that, the children of Israel, when they finally were released from Pharaoh and were getting ready to cross into the promised land, he sent spies to go spy out the land now Moses did not come up with that on his own but God told him God came to Moses and told him take 12 leaders 12 of the leaders take them 
and send them out to that land and go see where your enemies dwell. Go and spy out the land and see where the mountains are, where the hills are, where the deserts are. Go and spy out everything. Go see. So it was no surprise that when the spies went out, they saw those things that scared them. It was told to them from the beginning. They were told, this is what you're going to see. But when they came back, 10 of them had an evil report, the Bible says. All they saw were the enemy. All they saw were the, the, the walls that were very high. They saw the walls of Jericho. They saw all the things that were going to take effort to do. But there were two out of the 12 that had a good report. And they came back and they said, but wait, it says they even rent their clothes at the report they heard. They read, they were so upset because that's all they did was talk about the negative. That they rent their clothes and Joshua and Caleb said, but wait, the fruit, the fruit that's in that land, we can take it. There's nothing that can stop us. God has promised us that land. We're going to take it. That's all they said. But nevertheless, the children of Israel, because they did not believe, Faith is very important in this season. You got to step out in faith. You got to step out where you're not comfortable. God is calling you to step out and be stretched. He's going to call you out where you don't know what to do. You don't know how to do the assignment that's been given to you. But you need to have faith and believe that if he called you to do it, that you will do it by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. We're stepping into that season where we're going to walk out and step out in faith. And we're going to have to believe it so even though we cannot see it with our own physical eyes, we're going to have to believe God at his word so they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because of unbelief and because every single one of them that could not believe had to die off except for Joshua and Caleb that had the good report that I'm sure all those 40 years in the back of their mind thought, my God, we could have been there already. I'm sure all they thought about was the fruit that was in that land. That's very significant for where we stand today. You have to look at yourself and believe God for what he's called you to do. We stand in a ministry full of men and women of God that have mighty callings in their life, that have gifts and talents that God wants to use. He wants to use you. It's not just about using certain people, but it's the whole body operating, working together, stepping into that new season, stepping into those promises that God has called us. There are many prophecies and many things that God has spoken over revival for Christ that are getting ready to happen. And you, my brothers and my sisters, you will see it with your own eyes. You will see it with your own eyes. So you have to prepare yourself. But I'm going to read this little bit to you. I don't want you to go anywhere. I'm sorry. If you need to sit, you can sit. But if you don't have to, you, you can withstand staying. I want you to stand and hear this. And it says, 
in Joshua chapter 5. This is when they're getting ready to cross over. Now, all of them have died. All the ones that had unbelief, have, uh, they are no more. So now they're getting ready to cross over again. Or I believe by chapter 5, they just crossed over. But there's things that happen in chapter 5 of Joshua. There's steps that stood out to me that we as a people need to get a hold of and do ourselves. In Joshua, I'm going to start in chapter 5 and verse 6. And it says, for the children of Israel walked. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me go back up. I'll just, I'm going to just paraphrase it. I want to read all that. So when they get there in this chapter, God comes to Joshua and he tells them, I want you to circumcise the men. They already had been circumcised, uh, the ones that were in Egypt. But when they were in the wilderness, there was no circumcisions. So now all the people that had that were living now, they had to, he was Joshua, God was telling Joshua, you need to circumcise them. That was the first step. There's steps here. Now I'm going to bring that to us. God says we got to circumcise our hearts. We got to make sure our hearts, see, it's important when we're getting ready to go into this new season into this new place with God we need to make sure our heart is circumcised I'm going to say this if there's anything hidden in your heart realize the messages that were preached to you by our apostles removing the mask looking at the things in your heart that you've hid there that we've kept there and that we've hid and kept and they're hiding in there the Lord said right here he told Joshua have them circumcised well, the Lord's saying to you right now, my brothers, my sisters, we've got to circumcise our heart. We've got to remove everything, everything, and come to the Lord with an honest heart, with a clean heart. And there's a process to that. You go to God in counsel. You go to God and lay everything at his feet, good, bad. You become honest with the Lord. You come and you tell him everything that's in there. You lay it all down at his feet. And you say, God, everything that's in my heart, Lord, I give it to you, God. I open up my heart completely to you. God, remove, tie set, God, clean in my heart that there's nothing there that will stand in the way of what you want to do. That's step one. So he told them, circumcise them. And then it says, I'm going to read verse 6. And it says, and the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till the people that were of men, that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Unto whom the Lord swear that he would not show them the land which the Lord uh which the Lord aware unto the father made aware to their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. He said, I'm not going to show it to them. He said, I'm not going to show it, even show it to them until they're gone. But he told them, go and circumcise want to share this with you this other piece and it says and the children of Israel who he raised up in their stead them Joshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way and it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that uh, that they abode in their place in the camp till they were whole that's step two right there after they were circumcised, it says they went and abode in their tent and where they were at, where they were stationed until they were made whole. Now that's talking about a physical healing. But I'm telling you, when you open up your heart to God and you circumcise your heart and you uh, re let everything out of your heart to God, then what does God want to do with that heart? He wants to heal it. 
He wants healing. And see, sometimes we jump the gun. We want to hurry up and start doing something. Wait, 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 wait. Let God heal that heart. Let him restore you. Let him begin to fill you up. Let him begin to speak to you. Well, you got to sit and let the healing flow of his blood flow over you. Let him heal you. That's step two. They couldn't do anything, but they stayed there until they were made whole. Now remember, they're getting ready for something. They're in the promised land. Oh, yes. And it says in verse 9, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off of you. That's the third thing he did. When they were circumcised from their heart, and God came and brought a healing to them, and they waited to be made whole, he removed the reproach of Egypt. He forgave them. They were starting off from you now. Everything from the past has been gone. You're not supposed to carry the burdens of Egypt on your shoulders. When you go to the promised land, you're not supposed to take that with you. We got some cleaning up to do, don't we? Because you can't take that with you. Hallelujah. But the reproach of Egypt was lifted off of them. And it says, wherefore the name of the place was called Gilgal unto this day. In verse 10, and it says, the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month. And at even in the plains of Jericho. Oh, they could probably see those walls that they were getting to conquer. And in verse 7, I, 11, I'm sorry, I want you to pay attention to this. And it says, and they did eat of the old corn of the land. It says they ate of the old corn of the land. On the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day. Verse 12. And the men seized on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more. That was the last time they partook of manna. Now you got to think about this. When was manna created? And why was it created? Huh? Somebody said it. He created mamma, manna because they murmured. Manna was created for them because they murmured. And they were scared because they had nothing to eat. But right here, that's the last time they were going to eat it. They ate it for the last time. What has Chief Apostle been saying? Well, we get revelation on this side. But can you imagine what the revelation will be on the other side? And it says, it says that they ate manna anymore, but they did eat. Now I want you to see what they ate of next. Hallelujah. They had no more manna. It says, for they ate the fruit of the land of Cana. Their eating ability had changed from manna to fruit. And that's where we're going. You are no longer going to eat the manna of the old, but you're going to eat of the fruit. And we just learned about the fruit and the branch and the vine. How we're standing in a powerful place in revival for Christ Club. But you got to make sure you go through that process. You go through the process of being circumcised. You go through the process of being made whole. And you go through the process of letting God remove the old and you not taking it with you. 
You cannot take that with you. You cannot take anything that is old. But you got to step out into the new. We are in a new season. We are in a new time. The Lord has appointed. The Lord has called. And the Lord will send you out. Oh, that's all I have today. I believe I ministered to everyone that wanted to be ministered. I just thank the Lord. Just remember the words that were spoken, that we're in a place that's very vital and important for you as a part of Revival for Christ Club. You are in a place where God's getting ready to do great and mighty things. He's getting ready to open up and unlock that vault that uh, was prophesied and that I saw. He's getting ready to do some mighty things. But we got to be a people that remember that manna that was on this side will no longer partake of that. But we're going to eat of the fruit of the land. And the fruit is going to be powerful and mighty. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm so thankful to the Lord for all he's done. Hallelujah. Let's all just lift up our hands right now. Just take a moment. Father, I thank you and I praise you and I give you all the glory and I give you all the praise. Father, I just thank you. God, let your people remember all the things you have spoken in their life. Father, let it be fruitful. Let it be an anointed. Oh, let it be, God, full of your power, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hello, my name is Ryan Colley. I'm International Evangelist and Administrative Vice President of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning into our program today. And if you would like to help us take a revival around the world to our friends in Honduras, Mexico, Singapore, and Malaysia, this is how you can do it. First off, you can send in your checks or money orders to 1005 Southwest 4th Street in Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. You can also call in with credit card at 405-793-1777. That's 405-793-1777. And finally, you can do it through the cash app. That's money sign RFC ROAR. That's money sign RFC ROAR. Thanks in advance for helping us take the flame around the world. Remember, we are a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God.